well my dear students this is now second lecture in the series of extrusion as the part of a course of a technology of metal forming so this is second lecture on extrusion processes so far in the previous lecture we covered the different types of extrusion processes cold extrusion hot pro, uh, hot extrusion warm extrusion and uh, the complexity of the extrusion process its application uh, its usability and the variety of shape which it, it is possible to extrude with extrusion process we also discuss uh, many other issues Uh, as far as the 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 speed the strain rate and the various kind of dies etc so far so we covered almost uh, all issues in the first basic uh, lecture as far as the extrusion uh, lubrication friction the die length all those things we covered in this lecture we are going to speak on uh, 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 the different types of extrusion dies like you have uh, uh, the dies for hollow shape dies for solid shape right then single hole die multi hole die and uh, dies for uh, le- like uh, hyperbolic dies flat die then cosine die streamlined dies all those things and especially for uh, the hollow extrusion where you use hot extrusion process for producing tubular shapes right we would also cover uh, the different types of presses that we use in extrusion especially in hot extrusion we and uh, the different equipments the pullers and the loader the trimmer right and the furnaces for preheating of the billets before sending it to the press so uh, we would discuss this the another issue which is very important and that decides most of the the complexity it is the shape complexity factor because the shape complexity factor means as you have seen last time the, the there are possibility of varieties of shape it can be extruded and uh, but the shape complexity factor will decide whether one should go it for uh, using cold extrusion or one should go for the hot extrusion process and also Uh, the type of die it is to be used that all depends on the shape complexity factor another term which we call as the extrudability or formability so the extrudability is very quite similar as we have seen the forgeability uh, and other terms related so the extrudability is a term which decides an alloy which is easily extrudable so there are varieties of alloys available that can be extruded including aluminum alloy magnesium alloy copper alloy and steel alloy so the extrudability is very important issue so that we would cover and and then we would see how uh, one can select the different types of uh, material and the related process extrusion process the 
another very important issue while we extrude material or any forming process as I said that it has to be produced without any defects. So, the chances are there when we do not choose a proper die length, when we do not choose a proper bearing and when we do not choose a proper speed or uh, uh, strain rate for extruding that may cause different kinds of defects. So, we would discuss the varieties of uh, 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 extrusion defects and remedies for that, what one has to avoid so that you do not come across any kind of defects, right. So, starting with this uh, small brief, we would now start with. Now, let us see this uh, slide where it shows the extrusion case, usually cold extrusion and uh, this shows the a die which is a proper good die and a another die which is not a proper die or bad. The shape, if suppose the purpose is not going to lose of the section. So, this, this shape is redesigned so that it is easily extruded is the given at the bottom that is the upper one is the poor design and the lower one it is the good design where you have now see you have now balance wires you have more balanced die tonnage and uh, without any sharp corners and uh, then you have adequate balance wall thickness as well ok. And this extrusion is easy to extrude it will use uh, better filling better microstructure as well and better mechanical properties as well. So, this this if I can say you here that what is the shape complexity factor. So, the shape complexity factor now uh, if I say if I enclose a circle here right, if I enclose a circle here and uh, then I say uh, the total peripheral area and uh, if I find out the enclosing circle area then this ratio can be used to define the shape complexity factor. We will see later again. Now, uh, this was usually this shape is a solid uh, section having two pockets. So, hollow. So, semi hollow and hollow section it is, but when you extrude a hollow shapes is very interesting usually solid shapes extruding with single hole die or multiple hole die is very common, but when you extrude hollow shapes it is very difficult because as I told you in case of hollow shape you require a, a mandrel which is generally attached with a or the mandrel it may be in the form of die bridge also. So, uh, the different components this slide shows the components of extruding hollow shapes. If you look at uh, suppose you are extruding uh, aluminum 6063 uh, T6 aluminum alloy uh, and uh, uh, this is what is shown here the figure uh, we use uh, generally welding chamber die as I said in the so, welding chamber die that is also called as four tool die, right. So, we have a welding reason as I said the, the billet is to be sheared through the bridge and then it when it passes through the welding uh, chamber the these sheared portions will get uh, uh, welded and it will pass over to the uh, uh, bridge mandrel mandrel of the bridge and thus you are able to get the uh, hollow shapes. In C another uh, die which we call as the spider die has a different arrangement. Like in pore tool die you have ports right, 
you see in all the three cases whether you have a powerful die, whether you have a spider die, whether you have a bridge die, these all are used for hollow sections production. But uh, uh, in case of the porthole die, the uh, inlet, the pushing billet, first it passes through the inlet ports like here it is shown in A uh, 